All right, guys, hopefully your second video goes a little bit faster now that we've seen one example. You should have space on the worksheet uh, to do a second example down here. Okay, so the first video is up here, and now the second video will be down here. We're going to follow the same order that we did in the first video. So take a second to write down our example for the second video, y equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 1. Starting with our axis of symmetry, it's x equals negative b over 2 times a. And in this problem, my b is a negative 6 and my a is 3. Since my b was already negative, when I plug it into this formula, the double negative will change it to a positive 6. So I revert it as a positive 6 and then 2 times 3 on the bottom. We do a little bit of calculations, not too many, um, and we get x equals 1. And remember, this is our first answer. This is my axis of symmetry. Once you have your axis of symmetry, uh, you can graph it over here if you want. So at the 1 on the x, we're going to draw a nice vertical line. It's a dotted line, or you can draw it with a highlighter. And then we're going to use our axis of symmetry to find our vertex. So I'm going to take the number 1, and I'm going to plug it in everywhere I see a letter x. And then I'll solve for y. Again, if you want to use a calculator, you may. You should type it into the calculator exactly how I have it written on the screen. So make sure that you're using the parentheses and that you're putting the square in the right spot and you're using subtraction signs, okay? Or, I mean, again, these numbers aren't that difficult. You do have to remember PEMDAS, so I want to do my exponent first. 1 squared is 1, and then I'll do my multiplying. So make sure that you're following the order of operations if you are not using a calculator. I got my y-coordinate is negative 2. But remember, that's not how we write our vertex. We write our vertex as an ordered pair with the x, comma, y. So 1, comma, negative 2. Here's my second answer. And again, we can graph this on our coordinate plane. So 1, negative 2 is down here, and that's my vertex. Next, we're going to answer these four questions. We're going to focus on the letter A to do this. In this problem, my letter A is positive 3. Since it's positive, my parabola will be opening up, and it will have a minimum. My domain is always all real numbers. Since it's opening up for my range, I'm going to do y is greater than or equal to. I'm going to take my y number from the vertex, the negative 2. Remember, all of these are answers to questions that I could ask you on your worksheet tonight for homework. I do want you to answer the questions in this order. When you're working on your Delta Math, they probably won't ask you all of the questions. They'll probably just ask you one of the questions. So it'll say, what is the vertex? But you have to find the axis of symmetry to find the vertex, right? So just make sure that you know which question you're answering and make sure you're doing all the steps leading up to that question. My next question is uh, find the y-intercept, and that's just the letter C. So in this problem, it's positive 1. Don't forget, we're going to skip the x-intercepts until after we've graphed. Because in a perfect world, we're going to stare at the graph, and we're going to write down some answers. Well, I'll tell you a little secret. This is not a good situation. Um, this is like the one bad scenario for my x-intercepts. Okay, so now I'm going to skip my x-intercepts, and I'm going to go to graphing. Now, in this problem, my a was the number 3, so my special order pairs are going to change. And it's only the y number that will change. So instead of 1, 1, I'm going to use 1, 3, because I multiplied the 1 by the 3 from over here. Here, I'll circle it so that it's a little bit more obvious. I'm using this number 3. That's where this number 3 came from, okay? So I'm going to start on my vertex, this blue dot right here, and I'm going to go right 1 and up 3 and I'm going to reflect. And look right here, I just put a dot on my y-axis, and I put a dot at the positive 1, and that's good news because I said my y-intercept is supposed to be positive 1. So that means I'm on the right track. Okay, my next special ordered pair is normally 2, 4, but I am going to multiply that 4 times 3, so now it's 2, 12. Okay, and again, I think that you guys can fit this on your paper. I think that you're, you're going to get just right up to the tippy top of the graph, right? So starting back down at the vertex, down here, we're going to go right to and up 12. 
So if we go up two, we get to the x-axis, and then 10 more, so up here. And I can't fit that on my graph, but you guys can totally fit it on yours. Now, since the 212, like, just barely fit on the graph, I'm not even going to try for the 39. It would be 327, and I definitely won't be able to fit 27 on my graph. So it's okay if you can't get all the special ordered pairs. Just get as many as you can. And then make sure to graph it. Notice that this graph looks skinnier than our first example. And it looks skinnier because my A was a whole number. If I have a number bigger than one, my parabola will get skinnier. And the bigger the number is, the skinnier it gets, okay? So that's good. I, I was expecting it to be skinny because this was bigger than one. All right, now my x-intercepts. Unfortunately, I didn't put any dots on my x-axis. My parabola does cross the x-axis, right? So my parabola is crossing somewhere between 0 and 1 and somewhere between 1 and 2. But since it's not on an exact whole number, like, I can't really tell where that is. So unfortunately, if it doesn't cross on a nice whole number, you're going to have to do quadratic formula to solve this. So I wrote it out in class today. Or you can look at your notes from last chapter for quadratic formula. Uh, it's x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And we do some math. And I'm going to do this really quickly because we already learned quadratic formula. Okay. And then here's what I get for my final answer. Notice that I wrote it as an ordered pair. This is technically two answers, right? And we can talk tomorrow in class if you want to figure out how to find the Decimal answer, but I like I don't want the decimal answer, right? I want this answer. All right. So um, on your homework tonight, there will be one that's nice and pretty, like the first video, and then there's going to be one like this with quadratic formula. It's the only one with quadratic formula. Not the end of the world. Great review for your final. Um, but I did make sure that the homework matched up exactly with what we were doing for our notes. So this is the end of our videos.